what's up Rattler? So while I'm here in Europe, I'm going to travel around the Netherlands and I'm going to check out some of the most incredible European herp collections. Like these newts and fire salamanders behind me with Alex Kentner. Now, I'm not really an amphibian guy, but checking out some of these fire salamanders before I started filming this, I'm really loving these fire salamanders. Wait until you see these. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, Alex, for all the viewers out there that have never seen newts and salamanders like this, take us on this adventure. Uh, here I'm a share. I got, I, I got a lot of uh, European uh, newts. I also got some... Um, Asian here, uh, this is the um, Alpestris apuanus. This is uh, offspring of uh, uh, one and a half years, so they, they are still uh, quite small. And as you can see, uh, he still got uh, their uh, gills, and he keeps that uh, even as he, uh, an adult. Okay, so where you have a completely aquatic habitat up here, you have a, a drier habitat down here. Yes. And, and this is their permanent enclosure. Yes. And they will actually have their young in the water dish. Yes. You can see the, the bottom is made of loam. Loam is some kind of uh, mixture of sand and clay. And uh, being that, I can uh, yeah, regulate it with, with, with moss, moist, you know? I see, okay, that makes sense. And you can see that up there is the crest boys. Yeah, these are uh, Salamandra Salamandra crest boys. Very nice uh, animals. They're a bit slim. Mm -hmm. These are uh, quite slim uh, fire cells. Other ones are plump or every fire cell has, has something different, you know? Right. The only, the, the only time um, the the fire cells come in the water is to uh, reprodu reproduce uh, the, the offspring and in fact uh, these are called salamanders and if you uh, the, the water animals are called newts, newts right of and course. the funny thing is here because the, you're in the, in the Netherlands uh, in the Netherlands we only have one word for newts and salamanders and that is salamanders so we don't have the word Newt. Yes, in, in, in we, we can we say water salamander, but in fact we only have one word. One word, and that's salamander. salamander yes, gotcha. life is so much easier here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you uh, one of the the nicest uh, fire cells there is. These are called uh, salamander salamandra morenica, and these come from Spain. As you see, uh, typical uh, of the morenica is that they have um, red spots around uh, yeah, their their head and their side, their legs. I think these are one of my favorites. Yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. I mean, the whole fire salamander complex is just amazing. So we can't really have, I mean, there's, there's fire salamanders available in the United States and Canada, but you can't export them from Europe to North America anymore, no, can you? No, it, 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 it's correct. Uh, because of the, the disease, the salamander disease, uh, B-cell, uh, there's an import uh, ban uh, from the whole world. Right. These are my enclosure for um, salamander, salamandra giggly. These come from Italy and yeah. These are also fabulous. These are more yellowish. These uh, animals are quite popular uh, to uh, for poachers to uh, get uh, wild caught animals, and gotcha. they got into the trade. But I can assure you, these are uh, captive breeds from uh, from a German and from uh, English guy. So these are the fire salamanders that are found in Italy. Yes. Oh, those are amazing. Both ones uh, are, uh, as you can see, uh, very clear. They just uh, change their skin. They just had a good shed. Yes. This one is on the on the edge of uh, changing his skin. He looks very dirty, and it means that uh, he's gonna have to uh, yeah lose the the skin. Okay. Now I think that these are my favorite now. Mm. 
Yeah. But you haven't seen uh, not you haven't seen and nothing yet. You know? Oh well, show me the nothing. Yeah, okay, come on. <laughs> we go below. These are actually uh, the largest uh, salamander salamandras. These come from Lebanon. And these are Salamandra inframaculatas. These been bred by a, a, a Dutch breeder, Sergei. And they, yeah, these are absolutely fabulous. Uh, these are the largest uh, fire cells. Those are big fire cells. Yes, and these aren't even adults, you know. So they get much. They, they get even. So got, they get bigger than yes, this. They got bigger. Yes. Wow. Uh, as you can see on his head, he uh, is starting to uh, lose his skin. Very nice to see. And normally, um, when he uh, wants to uh, lose uh, his skin, he's going to rub to a stone mm -hmm. and try to, just like a snake. Right, just like a snake, exactly. Yeah. I, I do a, a small anecdote. It's about uh, Kevin, because he's got two. All right. And those <laughs> were, were even <laughs> almost twice as big. And now, they're... <laughs> You know, like a quarter. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, there's a quarter left, you know. <laughs> so there's Farah and Kevin. I look at Kevin's <laughs> shirts. Now, would you say that you are into fire salamanders? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah. yeah. How can you not be? I mean, really. So what is down in this oh. one? Oh, I think you have to pay more, uh, Dave. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing as how I'm paying you zero euros as it is, oh. <laughs> I will take, up that to take a look at this, zero Dave. euros. Take a look at this. Oh, look at that. This is a uh, Salamandra, Salamandra terrestris. As you can see, he's uh, orange. We, yeah, we call them reds, but uh, they're uh, like uh, from orange to uh, f uh, very bright red. In this uh, tank, I got uh, orange ones. And also some al albinos. I'm gonna try. Oh, you have albinos? Yes, these. yes. This is the nicest one. Also female. Oh, look at that. Also female. Now that is a gorgeous salamander. I don't know that I've ever seen an albino fire salamander you before. Now, you now have Dave. Yes. Yes, I feel honored. Here I got um, the salamandra corsica. Oh, here they are. And uh, the nicest thing of uh, about uh, salamandra corsica is they're very plumped, you know? So this is the Corsican fire salamander. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is bred by myself. This is, this is uh, five years old. Typical of uh, Corsica is they all got uh, the, the, the yellow uh, spots around the eyes. Right. So uh, would you say that these are probably one of the more rare fire salamander uh, types out there? Ah, uh, rare. I, I don't... I, yeah, they are, they are from an island, of course. Yeah, Corsica, yeah. Corsica, so... Yeah, they're... they're very different than mm -hmm. uh, the Solomander Solomander. Right, right. As you can see, this uh, Algaira Splendor got a uh, reddish uh, background. This is very special. I hope to breed. Uh, this is my own breeding. This one's then, I think, uh, four or five years old. Very uh, anxious to see uh, the offspring of this. Uh, yeah, old animal. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm gonna show you uh, a normal uh, splendor. Yeah. Just uh, for example. Sure, sure. Yes. Look here, Dave. Oh yeah. Well, this yeah. is a normal. That's a normal. Algaira. Also my own breedings. As you can see uh, the Algaira splendors are very long. They're very stretched. You know. Yep. Slim yep. and stretched, and they are perfectly uh, good climbers. These uh, beggars uh, can climb out of the tank easily. So up here, I have to have a. Uh, Oh, yeah. Extra to they, they can open the the cages. So They're they can, very smart. So they can open this sliding screen yes. on ah. their own. So do they test the screen at the same spot like a velociraptor? Are yes. they that smart? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. That's what I would think that they would. But don't believe the mo don't, don't, you don't have to believe <laughs> all the movies, uh, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so these are from Morocco. Nah, and Algeria. 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 Al Algeria. Algeria in English. North Africa. Yes. All right, so here, these are this year's babies. Yes, these are from uh, 2018. Um, the larvae were uh, laid in, uh, say, May. Uh, these are about five months old. Okay, so when the larva is laid, how long does it take for the larva to gestate into adulthood? Well, it, it depends. Um, if all goes well, uh, it, it should take about uh, from six weeks to... Uh, uh, let's say 10, uh, 10 weeks. Six to ten weeks to yes, gestate into quite, adults. It's a, bit, a bit average. And then what, what is your process for getting the adults to actually breed? Uh, first you need a, a male and a female of course. Naturally. In, in, uh, in autumn uh, 
uh, when the, the weather uh, is very, uh, when you got a low pressure and it's not too cold and there's no, not much wind, they, got, they get in a mating uh, stage and they mate. And that's as simple as that. Yeah, so it's as simple as that. Uh, in, in fact, uh, most newts are more difficult to, to breed. Just just uh, keep them in, in good housing and, and nature uh, does the, the thing, you know. And nature takes its course. Yes. So with newts, is it more of a water level change that, that sparks breeding uh, behavior? Most newts uh, need a, a certain uh, cold period. Because uh, if they got a cold period, they, yeah, they got an urge to breed. And uh, for example, the American, your American uh, rough uh, skinned uh, newt, sure. they start to breed when it's uh, uh, 15, 14 to 16 degrees. So the, the water temperature is the, the trigger. So that's it, just water temperature is the key to getting newts yes. to, to and breed. And of course a, a good environment, a good tank. Sure, that, of course. That, that's, I feed them with uh, crickets, wax worms. These got fruit flies, and uh, the other ones get uh, uh, larger food, from worms to maggots to wax worms, anything that mm -hmm. uh, get in their mouth. All right, so I noticed in these newt cages that you have a sh pane of glass that's actually submerged, and you've got another one up here like this. What is the function of having that pane of glass submerged like that? Yeah, well, Dave, I think that's the best tip I can give you. Uh, because of the glass, you can uh, feed before the, the glass, so the the food doesn't uh, get into the, the ground. Oh, and, very clever! Yeah, and you can see the the, the newts uh, eat in front of the glass, so it's a win-win situation, uh, Dave. Gotcha. That is very clever. So there's about I don't know, maybe a four centimeter, like one inch space between that pane of glass and the pane of glass that I'm touching, and you feed in here. And it keeps the food in here and not messing up the tank. Yes. It's pretty ingenious. Uh, in the backyard here, you've got these enclosures. And the reason why we waited until dark is because the salamanders come out at night. Otherwise, they're going to stay so hidden in there, we'd never see them. Like that beauty right there. These are uh, Tritus uh, marmoratus. They're from Spain. And this is a male, you can see uh, his short crest, and this is a female, plumper. And so during the daytime, oh. whoa, see ya. They're like critters, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during the daytime, we would have never no, found never. these in here. No, 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 never. So we had to wait till night yes. to come back out here and it's get these shots. It's a night adventure with you, Dave. That's right. This is, this is European herping in a backyard enclosure. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, these are some of the most amazing salamanders I've ever seen and some of the most amazing setups. So well, thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you for having me over. This is this is this has been a learning experience for me, which is really awesome. So thanks for having me over. I'm happy you uh, learned anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very rarely do I ever. <laughs> thank you. So I don't know about you guys, but I am really loving these fire salamanders. So I want to hear from you guys. Comment below and let me know what your favorite salamander species is. And I'm going to be here in Europe for a couple more days filming some really awesome episodes. So hit that subscribe button and when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Like this video and share this video. And I also recently launched Patreon. Check that out. Consider becoming a patron of this channel. I would really appreciate it. And until the next reptile adventure from here in Europe, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. <laughs>